So good evening, everybody, and welcome to being brand back uh, for this episode. Uh, we continue with our series for the Certified Kubernetes Administrator, or CKA, and this time we will go with the workloads and scheduling. For our guest, we have Wally Shari, which uh, will talk, as I said, in workloads and scheduling in this episode four. Next week, we will have episode five, which will be in another uh, time zone, as this is Vibramback EMEA, and episode four will be for Vibramback US. So before starting the presentation, a couple of quick notes. Uh, you can follow us on Vibramback, at Vibramback. Uh, this one is Vibramback EMEA, the third one. Uh, you can also uh, get in the conversation if you want to share something or just ask something uh, with the hashtag Vibramback. Uh, normally, this is done, as you, as you can see here, for the EMEA uh, 7 p.m. BST, which is 6 p.m. UTC plus 2, which is exactly right now. And as I said, our guest is Wally Chari. You can see there her Twitter handle, and I'm Dan Belmonte. And that will be all. Uh, I think, Wally, yourself, uh, I hand over this to you. So I will stop sharing. And now you have the power. I mean, hello, everyone. Uh... Welcome to V back, V Brown back. I need to get used to it. And uh, welcome to session four in this series. Uh, and thank you, Dan, for having me. So, as Dan said, we're going to do the uh, workload and scheduling. So, the workload and scheduling category is 15% of the exam. If you look at the exam, I have this repo, my repo, and if you look at the exam, uh, so the the first session, the cluster architecture installation was the highest, and the troubleshooting session will be the highest also. You see the 30%, and usually it's one question, but it's not really one question because you will do troubleshooting in each question. You might get things wrong, so you'll have to do troubleshooting, and that's why it's really high. So today we're going to do the uh, workload and scheduling, which is 15%, and you should secure this 15%. It's not really hard. Um, okay, so I created this repo to go over some of the topics and some of the subjects. So let's see what it is about. So workload and scheduling is basically the core uh, Kubernetes object, the bot. And the bot, and from the bot, there is other uh, object that spawns from it, uh, like deployment, jobs, uh, cron jobs, and everything else, daemon sets, stateful sets, and stuff like this. But you are supposed to really know the bot and deployment. Uh, there is, for example, you will see in the objective scaling stateful set, scaling replica set. If we, uh, if we know what is the bot. And we know how the relation between a deployment and uh, its uh, child, the replica set, and how the replica set creates mods, then you should be safe. And it's the same, if you know one, you know the others basically. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand deployment and how to perform rolling updates and rollbacks. So when are you going to do rolling updates? Okay, let's go to the Kubernetes uh, docs. And this is one thing that you really need to be very familiar with. So here I have a deployment. As you can see, I have the manifest, the ML manifest. And I have the image like Nginx 114.2. So imagine this is your product and you have a new feature or a, a bug fix and you want to update the uh, and most likely the artifact will be an image so the moment you run a command cube control set image to the new image or you change it manually here or you change it through a GitOps mechanism or whatever the moment you change the image in the deployment it's going to cause a rolling update what is the cause uh, the rolling update it's basically creating a new replica set and draining the old replica set and creating new pods. Okay, uh, so that's basically uh, the con the concept. W what else could cause uh, a rolling update? Scaling, scaling up, scaling down, or auto scaling. So basically, if you are scaling up, this is basically are increasing the number of pods, uh, scaling down, reducing the number of pods, and stuff like this. 
Okay, let's uh, take a step back and go over some tips first. So in the exam, you will be having like 15 to 16 clusters. It's already mentioned in your fact, if you, if you accuse, there are a number of clusters you have. And each cluster you'll have, it, each question, you'll have a different namespace. So the first thing that you need to make sure during the exam to remember your cluster context and namespace, it will be clearly stated for you. Okay, and there will be a clear command that you copy and paste so that you set your context. However, while you're practicing, get used to do uh, cube control config get context and check which context you are in during uh, your uh, practicing. And if you want to set the context, like you don't want to set the namespace, uh, most likely if you are practicing, you have to play with namespaces. You have to create object and deployments in different namespaces. And you have two options, either use cube control uh, minus N and the namespace you created, or you set the namespace as part of your context using this command, cube control config set context. For example, here uh, I have a cluster called kind vmug CKA, it's a kind cluster, and the namespace is vmug CKA. So I set it, so I don't need to remember it in my, in my extra commands. So this is the first step. The first step, make sure that you remember your cluster context and namespace. Uh, in the new exam, I believe auto completion is already configured for you, but just in case, if it's not configured, these are four commands and they are in the Kubernetes sheet sheet in kubernetes.io. Okay, make sure, uh, and even when you are training, make sure that you get used to uh, aliases and shortcuts because time counts, time management really matters in CKA and CKD and CKS. So basically all the exam, um, but time really matters. The CKA was used to be three hours, now it's two hours. It used, to, uh, now it's from 15 to 20 questions. You will not, you don't know how many questions you will get. You, you could get 15, you could get 17. It, it's uh, the FAQ says from 15 to 20 questions. You need the CNCF and Linux Foundation, they don't want you to fail, you have a second try. And they gave you the context and the constraint of the exam. Basically, if you cover the sheet sheet, and if you cover the task and concepts in Kubernetes IO, especially the task, if you go over the task and you do them, uh, the administration task and uh, uh, if you do them, all of them, actually, because basically uh, CKA and CKAD, they are overlap. So if you do the CKA, you are ready, 60% to 70%, you are ready for the CKAD, the developer. And when you study, if you study for both, it helps. Uh, some some task will, some, some question will not be covered in CKAD, some question will not covered in CKA. But there are common questions like network policy, like ingress, which is the next session. This will be covered in both uh, exams. So it's better to study them for both exams. So the main the main pages or the main URLs in the documentation of Kubernetes IO is doc task and doc concepts. And make sure that you are familiar with the sheet sheet and the commands in it, especially the output formatting, because basically, how would they know that you finished the question? They will ask you to forward the output to a certain file. Every question, basically, you will forward the output or you do something and you forward it to a certain file. So if you can learn how to automate these outputs and stuff like this, that would be nice. Uh, Monshad from Code Cloud, he has a free course that you can check uh, about YAML and about uh, JSON Bat. Okay, now, Definitely you need to have a cluster to practice on. For this session, it's not really important, the version that much, but it's always better to be on the same version because things get uh, deprecated. There is a new APIs. So you have to make sure that you are in the right version. According to the FAQ, okay, the current version for the CKA uh, is, uh, as you can see here, is 121. Okay, for the CKAD and for the CKS is 122, but for the CKA, it's 121. So make sure that you are in the right version. And the problem is the current Kubernetes version is 122. So if you go to the Kubernetes documentation URL and you go to the documentation, double check every time you search 
that you are in the right version. So click on versions. So the current version by default is 122, which is not the current version of the exam. The current version of the exam is version 121. This could change any moment. So make sure that when you practice, you practice on the right version. And when you search, you search the right version. Okay. So th these are the tips and hints. And when you use the cluster, use the cluster of the same version. And it's better to use cube control also, or cube cattle, or whatever, how you pronounce it, from the same version. This is how I got it. Okay. And uh, I'm sure that you can get uh, the installation uh, easily using Google or using cube control IO. So you can see that I am using both versions. I can be one version behind or one version less, but I prefer to be on the same version just in case some options have changed. And in the exam, you'll not get the latest uh, version. You'll get the same version. So it's, I, it's better to mimic the exam environment. Okay, so what, what is expected from you? Uh, in this category. It's, as I said, it's expected, you, you know, your deployments, you know, your config maps, you know, your secrets, you know how to set resource limits and requests in deployment or in bots. Remember, uh, deployment is just an, uh, another encapsulation of a bot and with uh, a number of replica set and basically that it can do a rollout or rollback. So you have the, the main object, which is the bot, and if you want more than one bot, you have this uh, resource, ABI resource in Kubernetes, which is called replica set. And if you need to change something on it, you have the concept of deployment. So deployment is just another casing uh, of bots. Uh, and they share the resource limit and the request. If you know how to do it in bots, you know how to do it in replica sets. If you know how to do it in replica sets, you know how to do it in deployments. Uh, okay. And this is another tip. Sometimes, okay, if they ask you for an option and you don't know how to find it in the documentation under deployment, maybe you need to look under BOD, okay? Because it will be there. If it's the setting is there, so maybe it should be there. Okay, uh, actually this reminds me of another uh, tip that I haven't uh, put here, uh, which is the command cube control. I hope you can see my screen, explain. So if I want to explain what, for example, the ABI, okay, cube control, let's start first with ABI resources. Everything is an ABI in Kubernetes. So what, what do I have ABI resources? And let's say I want to grab deployment. So, so deployment is an ABI resource. It belongs to the ABI named ABI group apps V1, okay. Uh, it, and you can write it as deploy. You can, okay, you can write the deployment, you can write it as deploy. Okay, let's see now, if I want to describe, if I want to know the schema, how I, I know now the ABI resource, I want to know the schema, and they don't have access to the documentation. Of course you have access to the documentation and you should be really familiar with it, but let's say that you don't, I don't have access to the, uh, the documentation. I say explain deploy. And this will explain deployment to me. So basically I need to write kind deployment and the version will be apps v1. And then I should have an ABI version, which is basically, I got it, that's it, apps v1. Uh, the kind is deployment is already here. And the metadata uh, is not here, but I can actually check. I can say explain deploy, what kind of metadata it takes. So this helps you, Okay, while practicing, you should use this, but during the exam, you should really know uh, what kind of resources you should have. And here, if you don't want the, uh, and if you just want the fields, you don't want recursive, uh, I always get this wrong. Okay, got, I got it correct this time. If you just want the fields, you don't want the explanation, you just want to remember the field, what's the field name, like, for example, cluster name or, uh, finalizers or labels or, and you want to know the alignment because it's really important. You have, a, you got the, your alignment wrong and you want to check. It's not clear from the documentation. So if you do the cube control, explain the ABI resource and you can dig down. So I dig down in metadata. You could dig down in spec instead of metadata. Okay. And if you look at spec, let's, uh, it's uh, very long, but you don't really need all of it in the exam. If you look in the spec, you'll see that template is the part where 
uh, we define the containers and uh, which basically define the replica set and under the replica set there is another spec which defines the container so if we go spec dot template dot spec we come to the part where we define the containers okay and we see some of the things that are required in this exam like node affinity board affinity and these are really advanced subject you might not get them in the exam but you really need to study for them just in case okay but here you can see all the fields and if you forgot in the exam and you cannot find it quickly or from the documentation this is another way where you can find it and you can find for example spec.containers if you just want to go spec.containers to yeah you can dig deeper again and so on so if you want to set an environment which is part of this exam this is how you set it do you need value from or do you need the key from and from or whatever so basically these are different options you can do okay so just remember cube control explain recursive okay and try to use it during your practice uh, in the exam if you need to use it you need to be you need to know really what the outcome is because it could be very noisy as you can see here okay so we are done with the tips and the scope so the scope we said deployment config map secret resource limits and request no affinity things and tolerations what's the concept behind all of this this is about um, when we are talking microservices when talking bots we are talking about uh, what is the best way to run our applications our distributed applications so we want to lose couple the data from the the bots themselves the bot is the smallest unit of execution and we want to uh, have a loose coupling between them so data requirement for us will be we need to decouple the data so that if i'm running in public cloud versus on prem versus private cloud I might use uh, different secrets, I might use different certificate, I might use different data. Even if in the same environment, if I'm running on dev versus QA versus production, I might use different credentials for access to the database or for anything else. So I need this decoupling. I need to keep the data away from the execution. Uh, it could be for security reasons also. I don't want to share the secrets or sensitive data inside the container or inside the bot or inside the deployment it could be for scalability if i want to scale i want the data to be outside and they can if i need to configure a hundred bot or thousands bot i don't need basically uh, the size of the bot to be an issue okay i need to basically be able to set it uh, externally so and of course for other security reason i want to make sure that i use a mutable image i don't want to every time a configuration changes i change my image and stuff like this kelsey hightower in 2017 he basically said this the tricky part when it comes to kubernetes yaml file is what not to put in them and what not to put in them is the configuration and that's why we have secret and config map okay now the first one the first way to best data to a deployment is actually to pass it directly as a command argument to the container. So the first question, for example, uh, this is a very easy question, by the way, you might not get it, you might get it, but uh, let's see. So let's say that the question is asking you to create a bot named test bot running in a certain namespace using image and make sure that the image usually it will be versioned in the exam configured with the sleep command and run for an hour. In the exam, the key points of the questions, you can copy and paste, like the namespace, the image name, and anything that uh, that you need to copy and paste, most likely you will find that uh, there is like a button that uh, makes it easy for you to copy. And on the latest, I did the CKS exam uh, like three months, four months ago, even the manifest, you don't even need to go to Kubernetes doc. Uh, part of the, the headers of the manifest, like the ABI version, the kind and stuff like this, uh, except the spec is already given to you. So basically, if you know your stuff, uh, you don't really need to go to Kubernetes documents that much. Okay, how do we answer this? Um, okay, so basically, let me open the answer uh, again. Another thing in the exam, try to use shortcuts. So I want to, so 
I want to use imperative commands, but I want to create declarative manifest. Why? For two reasons. First, I want to get used to creating things uh, declaratively and the GitOps way and stuff. And second, because in the exam, I might do some mistake or I need to add extra. Like for example, the command uh, cube control run or cube control create. I cannot add resources. If this uh, a question was about resources, I need to have the manifest and add the resources, or I need to change anything here. Like, uh, for example, this, I need to expose uh, a certain image on different boards, like in three boards or two boards. From the command line, I can expose it in one board, but from the, uh, from the manifest, I can add more stuff like to it, okay? So this is the way I do it. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so let's see our cluster first. And the exam is also about exploration, okay? Uh, like 20% of the questions, I guess, is about knowing your cluster. You are an admin, so you, you inherited a new cluster or you, you, you got assigned a new job. So you need to know, first of all, cube control version to make sure that you are running uh, what the, uh, the client is running. This is the cube cuttle. So I'm running version 121. And the master, the ABI server, is actually running also 121. Good. How about the nodes? What nodes do I have? I do kube control get nodes. Uh, I love wide. Okay. And I can see that I have three nodes. I have a control plane node. So we're going to get rid of the word master soon uh, as we progress on the releases. And uh, basically, I have two worker nodes. And that's the maximum cluster you'll have in the CKA. In CKA, you'll have some cluster, just one uh, control plane node and one worker node. And then some questions like the one that will, let's say that a question will ask you to schedule on a certain worker node. So you have to have at least two worker nodes to be able to do this. Okay. Now, the other thing, uh, if you have an upgrade questions, which will come later, or you might have done it already on the first uh, session, uh, make sure that basically you have the right version across the nodes, yeah? So that's another thing you check because this one will tell you just the ABI uh, server, but this one will tell you actually the cubelets on the nodes and stuff like this. So everything is 121, which is good. So I know my cluster. I know uh, I can check also if I have what kind of bots are running, okay? Cube control get bots minus capital A for all namespaces. I can see that I have the cube system and I'm running kind, which is uh, Kubernetes and Docker. And I don't have much. I have actually the namespace VMAX CKA and I have two uh, bots running there. This is left over from my preparations. Let's delete this. Now delete bots and as, as said, minus N name, you have to remember the namespace. You have to remember your context, uh, VMAX CKA. Now, Delete bots by itself, it will not do it. I will say dash dash all. Okay. Now you notice that there is the grace period, which is 30 seconds. So in the exam, this is really terrible. So what you will do, it's better to use force and grace period equals zero. Don't do this in production because basically what this means that it, this deletes it from your view, but it might not delete it from etcd. So it might, uh, so, so basically you are causing like mess, let's say, or something in your etcd database, which is not really nice. You have records that doesn't exist, okay? I mean, it will be a different version and you will not see it on the new version, but uh, I, I don't do this unless you really need to and don't do it in production. But in the exam, you could also uh, set these force and grace period to environment variables so that when you need them, you can do them. Or you, you know that, I mean, if, if you're not coming back to this, uh, to this delete, you can just do control C because already the command has been uh, communicated to the ABI server and it will take effect. But now if I need to change these bots, I need to wait until they delete it. The diff that's the difference between the uh, force grace period and not, and not waiting the 30 second. Okay. Okay, let's go back again to the question. So the question says, uh, create a bot named test, uh, na name test bot. Okay, uh, let me, where is my terminal? Let's see this, 
let's do this terminal like this. So Q, I can, I have an alias already. Okay, good notes. Uh, yeah, the alias is working. So there is a shortcut to create a bot, which is K run, and you say what, what image. So the image they wanted asking us to do it is what is busy box. And they didn't mention the version. In the exam, most likely they will mention the version. And the name of the bot, what is it? It's test bot. And remember the namespace, make sure to remember the namespace. This is one of the mistakes that people do in the exam, Vmux CKA. So the namespace was not created, you need to create it. Okay, so if I run, if I run this by itself, uh, K run image busy box, minus, ah, uh, it says Vmux doesn't exist, the namespace, yes. So if I run this by itself, what do you think will happen? What do you think the bot will, I mean, it's better you, while during practicing, you fail a lot. So, and you know why you failed, because during the exam, you don't want to fail. And if you see a problem, you really need to know, oh, I have seen this problem before and I know what the solution is. If I say K get bots minus N, uh, okay, if I do K get bots, I will not see it because it's not in the same, same namespace. If I do minus N, Vmug CKA, I see it crash loop back off. Why? Because basically I'm running BusyBox that doesn't have uh, a daemon. So I need to make sure, uh, okay, I will first of all, I need to delete it now because it's a bot. I can only change the image name in a bot. Uh, test bot. And I need to run basically, uh, as, as, the, as the question says, a sleep command. How, do I, how can I do this? Okay, first of all, let's put the, if I am going to run commands, it's better to put the minus N in the beginning, the namespace, it's better to put it in the beginning. Okay, because uh, the moment I use the abbreviation for commands, it doesn't like things. So what is the command that I need to do? It's basically sleep, uh, sleep, and for one hour. So I can do one hour, one edge, or 60 minutes. It's up to you, uh, but stay with the question. Okay, it's, it says it already exists. Oh, it's not deleted yet. Uh, Vmux CKA, the server does not have a resource. Ah, okay, because I missed typing what to delete. I have to say the ABI resource. And now I have to wait 30 seconds because I didn't use force, okay. Let's use force. Hey, grace period equals zero. Okay, it's already deleted. Let's recreate. Okay, the word created. Let's go get. Okay, it's running for five seconds now. That's good. So basically the question, uh, so basically, the question is, what did I do in this question? I passed data. What data did I pass? I passed data to the image through arguments. So I passed the command sleep and one hour. This is the basic way to pass data to the uh, bot. Is it good? No. Why? Because you are hard coding it. Okay. So this is not a, a, a good practice and you shouldn't see it unless, for example, that you want to run a bot, that this bot you're gonna use it, for example, to discover, uh, to basically, so that you can uh, exec to it, so that, that you can discover things like services from the service network and stuff like this, because you cannot do it from where you are now. You have to be on the, uh, in the bot network space, network uh, side. Uh, okay. Now, what can you do? Uh, let's uh, go to the second way uh, for, for um, managing data inside the bot. Uh, so if I have a configurations, so like for example, which port I'm listening on or how do I configure which user or, uh, or credentials to a database connection or anything, I can put them in environment variable. And for security reason, I shouldn't be hard coding them. So basically I will use environment variable. So question two, create a bot named mvbot running again on the same namespace using the image busy box configured with the sleep command. So it's like an extension for the same command, but this time set the following environment variable, server VCSA, home, local, and whatever. 
So you have two choices. You can go to Kubernetes IO and check what the manifest will look like for environment variables, or you are already um, you are already accustomed to, with the kube control command, and you know already that there is you can pass an environment variable. So basically, I will use the same command, but this time I can pass in the command line the environment variable. Okay, so this is. I need to break this into two. So let me. What happened here? Okay, so it looks like I'm. I pasted lots of. Uh, Okay, let's get the run command. Oh, yeah, I pasted. I copied almost everything. So k run, k is the alias for kubectl, run minus n namespace, uh, and the namespace vmug dash cka. Again, the same image. This, this time, the bot name is env dashboard it will sleep for one hour but what do i need to do i need to best environment variable how do i best environment variable i say m and then take it from the question uh, so the question the first environment variable is the name of a server i'll go and take this okay and if i need more than one environment variable i can do this again And they need the key value for the second environment variable. And if it has any special characters for safety reasons to be safe, you can quote them. Okay, now let's, for example, this one, okay, the password. Uh, okay, so double check the command again. I have K run and the namespace. I have the image. The image. If there is a version number, make sure that you include the version number. The name of the bot. That's if I use run, it will produce a bot. This is the name of the bot. And instead of creating a manifest, now if I want to get the manifest before I and I can see it and I can actually by bit of file, I use T instead of greater than, so to see the bot. So I and call it a useful name so that when you come back, you might leave a question. You might have a problem in the questions and you want to come back. So make sure that when you save files that they have a meaningful name that you can refer to like, like the name of the bot or maybe the number of the question or something like this, okay? So have a system in mind uh, for when you're writing files for yourself. So I'm writing this file, which is the manifest. Uh, Oh, actually, I didn't do the dollar do uh, echo dollar do. Yes. Oh, export dollar do export do equals minus o yaml for outputting yaml file and dry run for not running it for not resisting it on etcd and even, okay. And now if I do it again, already exist OC, uh, not OC, K delete bot env, bot minus namespace the vmug CKA and this time I'll use force and then use graceful period equals zero. Uh, okay, what deleted? Uh, we run my, uh, okay, good. Why the what got created? That's really, okay, let's, uh, let's change the bot name. I want to see why? If for some, uh, where is the, 
Oh, you see my mistake? And this is good. Okay, making mistakes is good. So where did I put the, the dry run? I put it after the command. And that's what I was uh, mentioning earlier. Make sure that if you have an option, you put it before the command. Okay. So let's uh, change the bot name. Okay. I didn't really do this in purpose, but it was good uh, that we did it. Uh, okay. So you can see the ABI version, metadata, labels, uh, if you need to change the labels or anything, and containers, it has the data, the sleep and whatever, and the environment. So instead of going to the documentation, this is an easy way to do it. Make sure that you know your commands, make sure you know your cube control commands, and that's why the sheet sheet is very important. Okay, now if you are happy with this, if you don't need to add, uh, for example, bores or anything else, yeah, just apply it. So what you can do, you can do this. You can either apply the file or you can do cube control apply minus F coming from standard input dash. So this will create the bot. Okay. So this is the second thing, uh, the environment. And you have other different environment. Now, okay, uh, config maps. Okay, my indexing is wrong. Now, another question, uh, ah, okay. Now I did, uh, create a bot name, um, yeah, this is we did. Uh, now list the user, okay. Now, how do I know if I wanted to check, okay? You have to have a system on how to check and how to check quickly that you did the, you answered the question correctly. So the question asked me to set environment variable. I set them, I think that they are fine, but how can I check that the running bot has really the environment variable that I did? So we can exec into it. Okay, minus IT, interactive and attach a terminal, the name of the bot. In this case, the last bot was called m2bot, and then dash dash and the command. I can just say print m, and this will print the environment. Uh, okay, what's the mistake I did this time? The namespace. Okay, make sure you are in the right namespace. Remark CKA. Okay, uh, and I see lots when I do it this way. This wastes my time. I shouldn't do this in the exam. I should be really careful and do it the right way. So, what is a better way? There is a command K set and the name of the bot. Okay, again, the namespace, minus n v mug CKA, set, and the name of the bot. And basically, what's the name of the bot? Uh, n2 bot. And this could be a deployment, this could be a replica set, okay? And I say list, uh, what is it, ls, uh, I forgot the command. Yes, list, but it's uh, it's an option. A known flag. Uh, set, ah, I forgot an option. Case, and set, env, okay. Okay, and basically it prints out uh, the environments uh, variable that I have set specifically. Okay, now, if we look back, why does it have extra environment variables? So it has environment variable host name. This is coming from the operating system. The server also coming from the system. So these are like system data. Uh, this is the one I set. Bat is coming from the system. But it has this one. This is coming from Kubernetes. Why does it have this? So basically, if there is a service in the uh, namespace, most likely the service will create uh, variables or environment variables that how to connect to it so if i have a service you will see it in the environment variables also okay uh, this is for the environment variables now uh, make sure that you learn this command the k set cube control set environment okay dash dash help make sure to know the other options 
This command is very easy for you to set environment inside the deployment after the fact or remove an environment. And just in, in this case, for example, remove the environment variable env. And uh, also list uh, the environments, okay, as we did right now. So make sure to basically to explore these commands more, okay? Okay, now we did that. Uh, cube control get pods uh, config map now now environment variables are good but they have a problem the problem is that if i have environment variable inside the bod like what we have now okay uh, okay set m bod list okay now if i do set m bod and i say server Okay, first I cannot do this in any bot because the bot is immutable. The only thing you can set is uh, the image name. Okay, and I say zero one. Uh, so it gives me an error, but it gives me a YAML file. Uh, and it will say that it cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot do that. So if you look here, fail to batch the environment update to bot because bot you cannot patch a bot unless you can batch it with an image name that's all you can do or image tag okay uh, but it gives you uh, where is server there should be server somewhere here name i cannot see the server name the environment server name anyway uh okay so the other way uh what i wanted to say that uh, let's say that this is a deployment okay and you wanted to change the environment variable while the uh, deployment is running you can change the environment variable but it will not take effect on the running pods unless you do what we call a roll out reset restart or basically a roll out update okay so you need to do a roll out update but if you uh, instead of using environment variable, you're using config map, and this config map is mounted as a volume, because a config map you can exp you can expose it as a volume, you can expose it as environment variable. If you can expose this environment config map as a file, then basically you don't need to restart your uh, your bots. Okay, they will basically take the latest uh, change on the on the, on the uh, from the config. Uh, but it's always better to do a rest uh, roll out restart actually. Okay. So, so I have a question here. So I have a I have a manifest, and okay, there is no there is no one to ask how to do this. Maybe I ask Dan. So I need to apply this. Okay, mm -hmm. and it will not work. So, okay, so I applied it, uh, control L, cube apply, I, I forgot the F, so, uh, cube, where am I, present working directory, oh, yes, I should be, code with rebels. So I applied it. And if I do get pods minus uh, n remug CTA, is it CTA or is it default this one? I have a bot that has issues. And I think this one is actually in default. Yes. So I have, uh, so it create, it's trying to create a bot, but it's saying create container config error. If I describe the bot, and describe is a good tool for uh, troubleshooting, and I say paste, and I see the events that are associated with this bot, so it was assigned to a node, 
it pulled an image in Gen X, and then I can see the error. It is it, it requires a config map, but the config map is not found. So it requires a config map called backend, but it's not found. Okay, so and that's good. It's not a, it's not a big deal uh, because basically it will keep. Uh, restarting the it will keep actually looking for the config map so if i create the config map now it will work okay do i need to have specific uh, key values in the config map okay i have the config map okay it's in the yaml file but let's check it let's check uh, cat manifest uh, back end config map dot yaml so the config map is three environment variables and with, with three values. Okay, I can do it. I can do it using from the command line, k create, and I want to config map. I can use the config map or I can use the shortcut cm. And, and the name of the config map backend, it's important because this is what is configured inside the bot. And here it says it actually config map backend config. So I need to give it a name. And I can say from literal, and I can put the literal, like for example, database environment and based. Okay. And again, if I have more than one key value, I can keep repeating this, like the environment from literal. I have database URL and I keep. And the last one from literal equals database user. And cm. OK. OK. If I do k get cm, I didn't see uh, k create cm, k get cm. I don't see it. Okay, so what did I do wrong? K create CM backend config from literal, correct, from literal, correct. K create. And I don't see it. I would say your namespace, but I think you have already correct. No, no, it's in the, I am in the same namespace in the default. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So K create, cube control create. Mm. But it didn't even complain. Okay, K create config map, the name of the config map from literal, from literal, and from lit. Ah, okay. Okay, let's go back again. Ah, yes, okay. So from literal database env. Uh, okay, yeah. So I put key, but I didn't put value. But the interesting thing, it didn't complain. So this should be testing. Okay, ah, okay, now because I commented out, but it didn't again create it. Okay, create config map, okay. Cube cutter. Create config map dollar do. Yeah, I didn't create it. Uh, from literal database and equal testing from literal. Ah, again, another literal that doesn't have a key value. So this is the value. And from data. Okay. Man, that's very interesting. So basically, if I forget the value, it will not oh, it did create it this time. Mm -hmm. So if okay, if the value is in the middle, uh, if the value is in the middle, it will not create it. Ah, uh, failed to create. Okay, that's strange. Okay. Anyway, and that's the beauty about uh, that's why you need really to practice because you will find uh, use cases that uh, they are quite strange. So I get the, if I do k get cm, which is a shortcut for config map, I can see my config map. 
And if I do K get bots, now it's running. So basically I didn't need to restart it. I didn't need to recreate it again. The moment it, uh, there is a config map that satisfies it, 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 it got it. And if you remember the command that we said that we need to learn, K set env, in this case bod, and the name of the bod configured bod. And it's an option list uh, container app, K set env bod configured bod. It doesn't show that there is environment variable. Okay, so how is the bot configured? So let's see, okay, edit, bot, uh, okay, edit, and let's see the bot, how is it's using the config map. Is it using it only, or is it doing more than that? Okay, so it is taking M from config map, okay, and and the status, Container ready, what schedule? Okay. Slash env. Okay. So it's using so it's using the key the directive and from and the referencing key map and the name backend config. Okay. Uh, but if I if I use the command set env bot configure bot list, it will not show me the uh, it will not show me the environment variable, which is interesting, and it's good that I did it. Let's do the exec minus it configure map, and let's print the environment. And you can see I have the uh, environment that I have set. So now, basically, I cannot trust the output of this command. So basically, if the environment is not set literally one by one, and if they are read using n from, I would not be able to use this command. Uh, but I, I am able to use that command print env. Okay. So if I have a convention, I can go say grab data and I will get uh, the environment that I set. So this is the second case. Uh, so this is uh, so now we are talking about config map and how we can do how, uh, how can we read from config map into environment variables. And we can change it to volume if we want to. Now secrets. Secret, every time you talk about secret, people will say that it's not encrypted. Yes, we know it's not encrypted. It's decoded. And the reason there was secret, as Kelsey Hightower explains the history behind it, it's just an array. It's just a binary array to hold basically binary data. Okay, but it has a special features. These special features that you can, uh, that first, you cannot share secrets outside the namespace. So secrets are bound to the specific namespace you create them in. The second thing that they are they are they are communicated over TLS and the existing memory. They don't exist on disk, and they're protected via our pack. Okay. Now to create a secret is same as as uh, as a config map. It's not much difference. So here, for example, I want to create a gov C credential and I have certain variables that I need to satisfy. So it's the same thing, cube cuttle minus n, the namespace, create secret. Now the difference is in config map, I didn't have types, I have only a single type. In secret, you have three types. You have generic, which is uh, generic, is, uh, there is no schema validation. And I have Docker, which is basically make sure that it's a username, password, and uh, a server, for example, and email, and it and if you don't do that, do it right, it will complain that this is not a valid Docker secret, and TLS, which is basically a key and a certificate. Uh, in this case, I'm doing a generic secret because it's key value. I give it a name, and again, I'm using from literal. Is there any other? Thing other than from literal, yes, there is from file, which actually can read from file and or can read from a directory, but there is a size limitation on this. If you are reading from file or from, I, I will skip this because it's basically the same. Okay, the only different, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Because the only difference is that it will be encoded. Okay, so because I'm using uh, my 
shortcut uh, environment variable for dry run uh, output YAML. It just outputted it. And you can see basically it's encoded in base 64. Okay, so it prevents uh, people from looking at it, but it doesn't prevent from decoding it. Uh, if you are in AWS EKS or in different environment, you can use a secret manager to encrypt it. You can encrypt it in etcd while it's at rest. Uh, so there, there are there are security measures uh, in how to make it more uh, secure. Okay, so I applied the secret, and if I do k get secrets minus nv mug cka. I can see that I have an opaque secret, which is the type of generic, uh, and it has five values because basically I actually did key, five key values, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so the data is the number of uh, uh, key value items in this case. Now, you might get a question saying there is a secret and you need to output the value of the secret. You might, or basically they're testing you if you, because basically I said some of the question is about exploring the environment or you know, you know how to do it. So you can use the JSON bat if you studied the Monchad course, free course, or you looked it up on the sheet sheet, or you can do it the other way using template so this is how i'm doing it uh, i think it's wrong here okay let's do it so basically i'm getting the secret and then from the namespace and i'm using template to output the template and these are go templates i believe and then i am passing it to base 64 minus d okay and here's the secret decoded so that's why the secrets are not secure because it's just encoding base 64. But they are secure because they are in memory, because they transported over TLS, because you can uh, guarantee their access only from the same namespace and control them using our backs and roads. Okay. Okay. Now, how did I find out that this is called data.password? If you see here, if you look at the schema, let's look at the schema. If I want to put the kind, I just say, okay, I remove the base 64 because I don't need it. And I just don't say dot kind. Okay, and it will give me the output of this, the value of kind, which is secret. If I want to put metadata, the same thing. So if you know the schema, you can basically print out anything you want. So I want to print the name. So this is how you print the name, uh, metadata name. Ah. And if you put the key wrong, it will not print anything. So, okay, that's, so template is very easy, especially if you have one uh, item. Okay. Uh, okay, now here, what's this? Let's see if I have, uh, okay, this is a, so this is a way where I can actually create questions and answers, but I haven't filled this one. Here, what I'm trying to say that I'm trying to say, learn your commands and make sure to, to check the help because the help command of queue control has samples that are very easy to copy and change according to your needs. So for example, here, queue control set env, it's gonna set an environment variable in deployment. And this deployment is called registry. And because it's on the existing context or on default namespace because they didn't specify namespace. They didn't specify namespace. And the environment variable is this key value. And so on and so on. Okay, so learn the uh, use case of this command. We saw that it's not useful 100%, but it's a good command to learn. Okay, now we covered the data side of it, the config map, the secrets, and the direct data. Now we come to the scheduling, the fun part. Okay, now the fun part, the first thing you need to do is resource limit and request. So this is the, from the documentation, uh, this is, 
I doesn't over correct me. Ah, here, this one. So from the documentation, remember what I said about task. These are the main one, concept tasks and a cheat sheet. Somewhere here you'll find cheat sheet. Tutorials, uh, tutorials, I forgot about tutorials. Uh, tutorials are in Catacoda mostly. Okay, I forgot about these ones. Uh, okay, so concept task. And let's look at the sheet sheet quickly because we just came from the output, the formatting the output. So the sheet sheet is very useful. First of all, the completion. Okay, this is the auto completion. If it's not set for you, this is how you do it. And this is how you do it for the alias. Okay, now what else is in the completion? You will find uh, output viewing finding resources so there's lots of example how you view resources and stuff like this but i i wanted the bar that where i actually can format uh, formatting out but this one yeah so instead of using template i can use minus o and i can say custom column or json or json bat and there are examples how to do it okay so if you just want the name of the images on a certain namespace, this is the command. You just give it a namespace, and this is how you put it. But make sure that this will be the header. So make sure that you don't include the header when you save it to a file, and so on. Okay, now back to the tasks. And my task now is about scheduling. And the task about scheduling, I need to do what? I need to do uh, resource limits. So this is managing secret. There is a task managing secret. So administer a cluster, configure bots and container. Okay. Okay. Uh, configure default memory request and limits for a namespace or assign memory to be a request or configure quality of service. Okay, which one we should do? Uh, let's do this one. So I don't need mini cube, I'm using kind. Okay, he's asking us to do cube control get ABI services. Uh, create new space, meme example. Okay, so here he's creating a bot and he's using resources, limit and request. Now, if you remember, I have I have some YAML file that I created from a dry run. If I go to this testbot.yaml, for example, it will include resources, but the problem with this resources, okay, it is, and this is on the container level. Remember that your resources, you can have it at the bot level, like here for all containers, or you can have it uh, or can override it at the container level for a specific container. And all you need to remember is that it's, uh, you remove the empty array, uh, it's not an array, it's a dictionary. You remove the empty array and you put what? You put limits, which is the maximum value, and you put requests, which is the minimum value. Okay, and then you put the resource. What is the resource that you want to control? So I want to control memory, and this is basically affects the C group. So I want how many, how much memory I want for this bot. Let's say uh, the limit, I shouldn't exceed uh, 500 megabyte, okay? And CPU, so the CPU, we count it in milli, uh, milli CPU. So I would say, or one core, one virtual CPU. Okay, the request is the, uh, the request is what is the minimum for the Kubernetes scheduler to schedule this? So I just specify the minimum requirement. So the, let's say my minimum requirement for what kind of service this one, uh, this is BusyBox. Image is busy box. Let's say 
it needs 100 meg cpu could go with 100 milli uh, m okay and that's all and that's all let me change the name let me change the name of the bot uh, to call it limits example and let's see if it runs or if i made a mistake cube control uh my create minus f test mod dot yaml okay it created now if i say okay describe bod test bod dot yaml that's the way how to check uh, it's not called test but what we did call it uh, limits dash example uh, I think it's a different namespace. Yes, it is in a different namespace. So you see, basically, I'm making lots of mistakes when it comes to namespace, but that's okay. I'm practicing, so it's okay. But in, during the exam, I shouldn't make these mistakes. If I do less, if I do less, and you can see here in the describe, I can check did I set the limits correctly or not. Okay. And also, like, this is another way to check the environment using describe. Okay. Okay. Uh, get used to uh, learning, I mean, get used to the describe format and learn the output. What does it mean? For example, if there is an error, most likely you'll see it here. So you'll see containers and something, and sometimes you'll see the failure here. You'll not see it in the in the events, and um, okay. Now let's. There is another command that will be useful in the exam, and you need to install the metric server for that. Okay. Now the metric server they removed it out from the Kubernetes uh, GitHub repo. It has a different repo now. It's in a different sig. Uh, so if I have the metric server running, I will I will get this. I will get this uh, command top. I can do k top nodes or I can do k top bots. Okay, so to see, and I can do k top bots minus a for example. And one possible questions, which is the bot that is using the CPU mostly, or using the memory mostly? Like for in this example here, this one, and in which uh, and in which namespace for example, or maybe list the three top bots. Uh, so this is using zero, zero milli, which is less than uh, uh, milli, which is strange. This is not like, uh, because it's sleep command. Uh, this is using 54 milli cores, 70 milli cores. So you see the utilization is really very low. Okay, so when we put the resources, that's fine. So this is one question. This is one question, how to do the limits and requests. Okay where am i the other thing is not affinity okay let's go back to the bot i want to show you something when i do instead of describe i will do edit the bot now what happens during scheduling okay uh, spec spec what happens during scheduling here this is what happens during scheduling. So this node name field that specifies the node name didn't exist in my manifest. Yeah. So what happens when I say cube control minus F apply the manifest, it goes to the API server and it persists on etcd. Now, after persisting on etcd, the scheduler from time to time checks and it gets a notification. Uh, there is a new bot. So basically it checks, it says that when it sees that there is no node name, it will give it a node name based on the hardware, uh, based on different factors. Uh, one of them is basically the hardware availability, number of requests and stuff like this. And that's why we did the limits and requests. If it doesn't have one, it will give it one. But if you want to override it, like for example, uh, what happens, okay, let's go back. Let's go back to, PIM test mod.yaml. Okay, and let's change the name again. 
and let's call it master run okay master is not a good name control lane mod okay now i'm not very good with memory i need to really get the name so this is the name of the control plane can i schedule bots on a control plane no why not because usually there is a taint if i do describe this there is something called taint and toleration taints i assign them to the nodes toleration i assign them to the bot if a node has a taint no bot can run except if it has the toleration to run on it if i describe this node to see if it has and by default usually the control plane nodes have a taint okay uh, which is uh, grip minus i taint you can see here that there is a taint and the taint effect is no schedule so basically it's saying don't schedule on this node there are three uh, effects there is no schedule no exec and prefer no schedule Okay, so if I wanted to, if I wanted this bot to run on this, if I have every node is busy and this node, the control plane node is not busy, it will never run on the control plane. But one way, one way we can do that is that, uh, let's try if it will work or not. If we do this and we say node, uh, sorry, and we put in this back, node name and we give it the name so we override the scheduler okay now i saw some people they are doing this in some of the exams okay when they are asked to basically schedule a bot they just do it the easy way i'm not sure if this is uh, marked or not okay now if i do uh, k get pods minus a grab uh, and minus o wide to check where it is running uh, grab uh, control okay control name so namespace v max aka correctly i have my control blame bot and guess what it is running and guess where it is running? VMAX CKA control plane. Okay. Now that's basically overridden the scheduler. And that's another lesson on scheduling, basically how to uh, enforce scheduling on a certain bot that has a taint or whatever. So this is one way to do it, but it's not the best way. Okay, because it doesn't take in consideration any utilization or any other factors in scheduling. Uh, okay. So there is node affinity and node affinity. Uh, I find it hard to remember this. You either use uh, uh, the explain command or basically you have to go back to the Kubernetes IO. And so basically here, what you are saying, you're saying this bot, this, uh, the, the, this deployment is going to deploy five bots, okay? And during scheduling, you're going to make an affinity decision. But this affinity decision will be ignored during execution. So if the bot is already running, uh, this will not affect it. And how do you select that node? Is basically if the node has a label, which is called environment, and this node has the, the label called environment equal production, or it may be even uh, operator in values production yes so if it has uh, it so here because this is n it could be different values but for here for now if the uh, the node is labeled environment equal production uh, these five words will run only on nodes that are labeled m equal production okay okay now i want to show you uh, Oh, okay, this is, so I have a repo, 
that has more uh, resources. Okay, and one of the resources that it points to is to Stelly. And Stelly basically he created uh, some exercises for his colleagues. And it, they include deployments, they include scheduling, they include configurations, and they gradually escal uh, escalate the uh, difficulty. So the easiest questions will be, the lower number, the higher the higher questions will be the more difficult. And he has some challenges at the end also. Like one of the challenges staying to work or not and schedule. So okay. So so we, we knew that the control plane has a taint. Yeah, when we did the taint, we knew that it has a taint. Let how do you do a taint? So maybe the one of the questions will be taint a node. And uh, let me get another node name. Oh, this is all control. I need, okay. let's get the nodes. How are we doing with time then? Well, more or less, um, we should finish in around 10, 15 minutes. I don't know. Okay. Have... Yeah, I can. Uh, so basically, Tint and when you taint a node, as we saw on uh, on the master node, okay, you have to give the key value. Here, the key is really long. It doesn't have to be. The taint could be env, as in the example we saw, equal production. But that's not enough. You have to put to give the effect. So the effect here also no schedule. Okay. So now I tainted. The server doesn't have a resource. Ah, sorry. I have to say tainting what. So I'm tainting. A node. So no, now this node is tainted. How can I double check? Okay, describe and node this node. Okay, and we pipe it to less. And I can see here that there is a taint, and the effect is no schedule. Okay, if I want to remove the node, the taint. Uh, I always forget this, but I think that's it. Okay, so now it's, it says untainted. Now, if you don't remember this minus, okay, now if you check, uh, let's check, describe the node, grab minus i, that's just a double check. You see, there is no taints. Okay, let's taint it again. And if you don't remember this format, okay, it is in the cube control sheet sheet, but let's say, you forgot where it is and you don't remember it and you cannot find it. You can just do it from edit. Okay, edit node. Okay, VMUG CK worker. And you go to taints. And you can see the taint is here. And re uh, you think that the taint will be under metadata, but it's not, it's under spec. Okay, so this is the taint. And you can see the effect, the key, and the value. So you remove it from here. Okay. Now, if I check again, describe. Yes, it's done. So uh, do whatever you uh, makes it. Uh, I mean, easier for you. But I I would say remember both, just in case. Now label is the same. Okay. So. So let's go through the resources. Uh, I didn't, I wanted to do some diagrams, I didn't. So Excalidro is a really nice open source product for uh, for uh, for drawing and uh, illustration, especially link. Okay, so make sure that you know your environment and that you read your FAQs and stuff like this. And as you can see here, this is the CK and CKD environment. So how many clusters you have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can tell from these which cluster will be the network policy. Guess what? This cluster will be the network policy. And the one that has the network policy will have one master and two workers. And maybe this one will be the scheduling also. Flannel, we cannot have network policy. Look back, most likely this is the troubleshooting. So, okay, we are not using network, so most likely why you're using loopback CNI. Uh, and it says it, missing worker node. 
So from reading this, you can actually figure out what you are getting in the exam and how you set up your environment. So to work or not, as I set it up, is uh, good enough. Okay, just go through it. Uh, make sure that you, uh, when you do the, remember the version thing, when you are searching, and you are not allowed to go to discussions. So let's say we are looking for taints, and I say minus discussion. Okay, so that I don't go to end the discussion board because it's using Google Engine at the end of the day. So I get I get the things I need, and you can bookmark them so that you don't really search, you don't waste your time searching. So I have this repo that I created for today, but it's not enough. Uh, it's actually, I mean, if you do this, it should be enough. Uh, one thing we didn't do, okay, let's, uh, let's cube control, get deploy minus cap, my capital A. So I have, uh, I have this deployment, the metric server. Okay, let's check uh, its role. So one thing you need to check, for example, rollouts. I can say cube control roll out, restart. I want to restart because I changed the config map or something. Uh, minus N cube system, the metric server. I put some question regarding the metric server. Okay. The server does not have a response. Oh, and I have to say the ABI resource, what type of is it? It is a deployment. It can be short, short deploy. So basically it's a restarted. How do I know that it's really restarted? I can check what? I can check the rollout history or rollout status. I can check the rollout status. Okay. Uh, again, I, I mean, this is really bad. I keep forgetting things. Okay, so it's not finished actually. It's waiting for rollout. One old replica or bending termination. Okay, so it didn't really finish. Okay, let's see the history. Okay, so I have four roll. Uh, uh, I have four uh, different version, which means, which means if I look in the uh, on this namespace and I look at the replica sets. Uh, if I get the replica sets, because every time I do a rollout, get it's, it's get cube control get replica sets, which shorten RS. Okay, I can see that the metric server for each uh, revision, I can see a metric server. Okay, so I can see the desired, the current, and the ready, and now it is ready. Okay. Uh, I do the history again, and I can see the revisions, but I see the change cause is nothing, and this is bad. Maybe in the exam, they will ask you if you do uh, a roll out, uh, an updating rollout, uh, maybe you need to keep the history, maybe you need to, uh, maybe you need to record your history, what did you do? So where is my, okay, so how do I do this? When I do the operation, be it scale or whatever, I use the option record. That's all you need to do, record. Uh, and on the flag record, why? Roll out, restart. Yes. It's not taking it for this uh, rollout command. Ah, okay, it's not taking it for our outcome. Okay, let's say, let's say scale. Okay, replicas, let's say equal three. Okay, now if I look at the history, as implemented, the history for this deployment, the metric server, Okay, now I have in the history the reason why this revision happened because I ran this command. Okay, uh, 
So if you want more references to the Kubernetes documentation for each line item, you'll find it here in my GitHub repo. And you will get something here, this Adan Rashid, it's old, but it's useful. If you go to it, uh, how, how long we have, Dan? Mm, or we don't finish. have? Yeah, we should finish in, I mean, three, four, min four minutes, don't worry. Okay, three, four minutes, we will do this. So this is a quick revision on what you need. And uh, Adnan, he did this just before the exam, like half an hour before the exam. He wanted to remember quickly things that matter, okay? So basically, this is the overview of the CK exam and his uh, links and stuff. Uh, what's the architecture? So this is very, uh, very nice. Uh, when you feel like I do this sometimes when I you feel like brain fog, brain blocking or something like this. So this is reminds you of the things that you need to remember. Uh, for example, this is the general schema. So you have to have the ABI version, the kind, the metadata, the spec and the status. The spec is the desired state. The status is the current state, the metadata, the name and labels, uh, especially in uh, for services and uh, uh, and for network policies. Uh, so, and this is how the service works and how it's tied to pods. Uh, but for today's session, it is the not here yet. Okay, the scheduling. And this is cluster communication, really highly available cluster. This is all, all the beginning, service account. Yeah, the bond scheduling. Okay, so the, these are the factors that have been the scheduling. Nobody will ask you in the exam. It's hands-on exam, so basically, uh, you can change the scheduler. If you look, and this is basically look at the um, running bond, and you'll see like default scheduler, uh, scheduler equal default scheduler. So if in the exam they have another scheduler, you just put uh, on this field the name of the other scheduler. That's all. Uh, scheduling bots with limits and label selectors. So here's a quick review of it. Uh, daemon set, we didn't cover daemon set, but basically daemon set will not run on the master unless you create a taint. I have on the rebel, I have on the rebel manifest to show you this. Uh, forgot to run it, uh, daemon set.yaml. So here, so basically by default, daemon sets, which runs on every node, like for logging, like for monitoring and stuff like this. But if you want to run them also on the control plane nodes, you have to create this toleration. And this toleration is saying run on master. So this is the taint on the master. So if, if this taint exists with no schedule, which is only exists on the control plane, uh, basically this will allow the daemon set to run. And that's why you need to go like last minute because this will remind you of things like that, okay? Deploying applications, the, uh, the rollout, the replica set and the relation between them. So deployment creates a replica set, we saw that. Uh, uh, the replica set basically provides the high availability and the self-healing, okay? And managing data, the resistant volume, we didn't talk about resistant volume, but basically we talked about the config map secrets and uh, uh, data directly, um, putting data directly. Okay, so this is a nice document. You can get reference from it or just search Adnan Rashid CKA, or you can see it in my repo and quick review material. Uh, for news, Nana just published uh, a new course. Nana is, uh, oh, I didn't put it, okay. Strange, I thought I did. Okay, so Nana, uh, she's a famous YouTuber. I have, I think, over a large number. I'm not sure if it's 3,000 or 3 million. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, she's also an AWS Container Hero, and she has lots of free courses, and she has a, a new CKA course. Oh, okay, here. And she has a new, uh, new CKA course. It's a little bit extensive, but she usually do discounts, so... Watch out for this one. Oh, she did a discount, but still it's a bit expensive compared to the others. 
Okay, and I hope that uh, I highlighted or uh, that I or I showed you a tip or something that will make it useful for you during your exam or during your cloud native journey. Uh, my, the, if you, the key takeaway is practice, 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 make mistakes and resolve your mistakes, find out why you did the mistake. As you saw today, because I wasn't really well prepared that I made lots of mistakes, especially with namespace and with the, where do you put the option and stuff like this. So make sure that you practice before the exam. And now you're lucky because you have access to uh, the killer.shell uh, practice exams. You should do one before you are ready for the exam two weeks, and you do one just three days before the exam to make sure that uh, you cover your weak areas. And thank you, Dan, and thank you, V. Brown Bank, for hosting me. And I hope that uh, this was useful for your audience. <laughs>